Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Mythic Erica who while she was known and did come out when Conquest did she was not anywhere to be found upon the release of Conquest and this is because she was being held back to be an exclusive character for the upcoming War Depot. This is, was announced, this is quite interesting. Visually on the right hand side we can see Erica. I think this is obviously the second alert Erica. We've only had three in the game. We had the strong one in the S-Class era. And now we're on to a little bit more offensive looking Erica. But if you look at the skills on the right-hand side, there's a lot of green and plus signs. You know there's lots of heals coming in here. Erica just sticking to what we know. On the left-hand side, she has easily the most animated um, art in the game i would uh, honestly go ahead and say maybe this is too much maybe we've crossed the line here maybe we have to rethink <laughs> but it is actually just obviously crazy um the, the casings just popping out non-stop like the endless clip we just joked about on my stream the endless clip if we look at her stats as a tier 5 maxed out gold mythic level 600 she has 12,891 attack, 13,859 defense, and 14,076 HP. So, obviously quite balanced towards the defensive stats that attack very low. So, while she looks quite offensive, it looks like it's playing into that more defensive role again. Now, she is an alert character. She's considered a medic by no surprise. Mythic character, of course. And she is a member of Road to Survival because she is a Road to Survival original character. And that is going to be her allegiance. Now, if we check out her rush, it is called Revitalizing Exchange. It is a 66 AP cost rush. Deal 375% damage to a single enemy. Three other teammates recover from heal reduction and get 20% bonus HP. Heal those teammates by 30% of their max HP. So obviously this is just an attack heal rush. We have seen some of these in the past. I actually really like attack heal rushes, especially like the hard hitting single target. And, and 375% is actually pretty good, even though her attack stat is quite low. If she was to do that against, let's say, a Sandy, if she was to do that, let's say, against someone who she's going to do trait damage against, she could potentially take them out. Let's say a Negan leader, not going to be very defensive stat, and Erica with a 400% rush pretty much should do quite a lot of damage. The other part of this is the Healy part, kind of what we would have expected, and I like it. It reminds me a little bit of, I mean, to a certain extent, the five-star characters like um, Ellen and Randall. Um, where they used to do an attack heal, single target attack heal. They used to heal the entire team, but they was also used to just do normal HP to their max, you know, healing the max HP. Whereas, no matter what, if your entire team is full HP, you will definitely give bonus HP to three characters on your team. Well, actually, you might not. If they're if they're everybody's max HP and max bonus HP, this the heal part. This is useless. The the, the chance of that happening is extremely extremely low. Now the recover is a little bit weak, just because it is is purely recovering heal reduction. I get why it's happening. It's just to make sure that the heal actually goes off. But that is pretty much obviously the weakest part of this. So as you can see, we have got the rush on Erica up right now. I did take Wang Far on this defense team just so I could show you with the 100% heal reduction on my teammates. She should be able to remove that, then heal characters. You can see one of my characters quite got quite heavily focused. So Yumiko will get that 30% base heal. And then she and two other characters should get 20% bonus HP. The bonus HP is going to be random for the other characters because I do not think anyone else got hit by the looks of things. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to focus Wang Fire himself. I should be able to take him out with the rush, which we are. And you can see it healed all the guys up the top. Yumiko, Dexter, and Pete. And like I said, Pete and, and Dexter only got the bonus HP, but Yumiko got a little bit of her base HP back and the bonus HP on top. It cleanses the heal reduction first so those heals can come in. So on a defense team, obviously, this is going to work very nicely. She has got a bit of a slow rush when it comes to a defense team, though. She will need AP on attack to be able to get a natural turn three rush. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be basically hoping that she gets attacked or hoping potentially that other parts of your team hit AP gain. There can obviously be characters that do that. We saw that with the, the review I did of Glenn 
these two characters could potentially work together where she could use a full stat weapon and it definitely wouldn't be a terrible idea honestly but she is obviously alert so she can be one of those characters that are harder to attack in the first place because of the type of kind of weapons she can use on defense teams but if we look at her actual skill upgrades you can see that to get the extra recovery and healing target she needs to be a tier 5 gold mythic so unless you get her as a tier 5 gold mythic it will only be two characters being healed and at a tier 3 you get the opportunity to unlock 100% bonus damage with trainers this obviously might not be a priority for you especially on the defense team you might not be looking to see her actually do huge amounts of damage but that actually you know could take someone out especially someone very offensive it doesn't really matter about the trait you know damage that it would do otherwise you know like princess would take a lot of damage from a 400 percent hit even if she has only got 13 you know thousand base if you have the odd 1535 just on your you know, defense team you know she's obviously going to get boosted from that so it could work very nicely now i'll go across to check out her signature move and this is where things start to get extremely interesting it's called rally the troops it has an initial cooldown of turn three Cooldown of 4, number of uses 999. Revive two teammates with 25% of their max HP. Not too much going on here, but a double revive obviously is extremely, extremely powerful. This is as powerful, I believe, I could be wrong here, but this is as powerful as, let's say, Violet and Mackenzie in the six star era where it was turn three i think their cooldown was a bit better i don't think it was a cooldown of four it might have been a cooldown of three but it doesn't matter I'm, I'm pretty sure the initial cooldown of both of theirs were turn three and they were extremely effective so i'm not put off by those initial cooldown and cooldown numbers personally just because i've seen it work really well in the past 25 percent hp to the characters that do get picked up obviously isn't that amazing but any revive is good you could potentially have other healers on the team eventually we'll get characters that can you know help those revive characters go off because when you get revived now you do obviously not get full ap you have to be commanded to rush the same time you are revived but you still get a turn so you get still get to gain ap you could potentially use your signature move but you just cannot rush because your adrenaline just gets you know reduced by a certain amount now this of course can be dazed Daze would obviously stop this signature move and there are characters out there that would obviously be able to daze already i believe yumiko another character that i looked at recently does have daze and yumiko is more of an offensive control and obviously seems to be more like directly lined up to take down erica by the looks of things okay so here we are on turn three i did take two very low level characters in so i could just quickly take them out those are the characters that are going to get revived. You're going to see they're going to have half AP. They will probably get full AP instantly. And that's just because when they get revived, they'll just instantly attack. And the animation order might just sort of, you know, mess up. It looks like it's get, they're getting revived with full AP. But actually, they're getting revived. And they're just getting the AP from the basic attack that they'll do. So you'll see the active come in. You'll see the rush of Ezekiel. And they've already gained the AP from that basic attack like i said they haven't got any ap on attack weapons but you see they didn't have a rush and obviously the amount of damage that you can do against these low level characters would mean enough ap to get a rush normally when being revived and the bonus of erica's signature move is when it comes in at turn three as the initial cooldown that is the turn after the natural rushes of the attack team so in terms of the timing it's time to perfection for your own defense team you know if it was turn two sure that would be nice but the majority of the time characters are more likely to be taken out by turn three erica herself is susceptible to just being you know targeted in those first two turns but that isn't necessarily a bad thing you know i wouldn't say she's a priority in those first two turns but if the in an extended fight erica's going to be obviously extremely powerful now if we check out the upgrades and stuff even as a tier 4 she gets everything to the most powerful that it potentially can be with her signature move no trainers are required in the upgrades to get this done so if you get her to tier 4 you'll get the extra revive target at tier 2 and then at tier 4 you'll get the minus 1 starting cooldown and 10% revived HP obviously that's important so I would definitely tier 4 Erica if you've got her as soon as possible otherwise you're going to be you know looking at the initial cooldown being turn 4 and then the revive HP being 15%, nowhere near as good. 
Now I'll check out Erica's passive abilities, and she doesn't have anywhere near as many as other characters do. A lot of characters have four, she only has three. She gets the default spirit for being a medic. Obviously this means that 10% of all of her healing performed will also be granted as bonus HP. So those three 30% heals that she does, she'll give an extra 3% to bonus HP, so it's actually going to be a 23% bonus HP rush, which might not sound like a lot, but it all, it all counts, it all counts together. Now, Vendetta is the next one. Whenever a teammate dies, this character gets 40% attack for two turns. This is actually kind of interesting, just because if other characters are focused in those first two turns, when she does get her natural rush, she will obviously have more attack and be more likely to take someone out because of that. Her last mythic ability is Daze Resistance. Now this doesn't seem that great because it's only 20%, but this stacks with mods. If you have any 80% Daze Resistance, you can get 100% resistance for Erica, which would mean immunity. And that would be immune to having her revive Dazed. Extremely powerful there. I would 100% recommend that, honestly, if you were to get her and you did have an 80% Daze Resist. Even if you only had a 60%, you're just getting a 20% boost on any mods you already had. But, like I said, the potential is there where it can be immunity, which is obviously extremely powerful. Okay, so on the first turn, I'm just going to attack with Erica. I'm assuming those low levels will get focused. And we're going to see how long this buff works. Does it work like hold the line? It's going to last for two turns. This is actually quite important. This means if anyone gets hard focused on that first turn, she should still get that natural rush turn three. But obviously in this situation, she's not because she's going to be at 63 AP. She still needs to get focused a little bit. We'll see if she gets attacked. She is. So she's going to be able to rush. So we'll do a rush. And you can see she's still got that 40% attack boost. And we can just focus someone who's got their rush up. It's better off, obviously, to take out someone who's going to most likely be uh, rushing and low HP. And that's it. That's the, that's the bonus that she's going to get from that passive there with Vendetta. So you did obviously see some Daze attacks come in. I didn't resist it, but if I did have that 80% that plus Daze resist mod on there, it would have been immunity. Now, if we go to the breakdown of the skills, we can actually see Vendetta is broken into two upgrades and this is why it looks like she's only got three passives because vendetta opens up at level one and as you can see she gets a 20 percent boost when that happens then it gets upgraded again when she is tier five and it goes to vendetta two for an extra 20 percent on top so those, those two stack together she obviously gets spirit at, at tier two and days resistance at tier four but if you wanted to unlock her full offensive potential you would need to get her to tier 5. Now, I'm not a big fan of Vendetta, honestly. I would have, you know, preferred if it was called something like Hardened and it was Defense instead of Attack. In my mind, that would be kind of cool. Like, her teammates are starting to drop around her on a defense team and she's a Hardened, you know, battle medic. So she, she kind of just holds the line a little bit more and gives herself a bit more opportunity or chance to get off that signature move. I think that would have worked obviously nicer. It seems like Erica's being geared towards more of an offensive medic, which is a, not a shame, but just like, I think she's just gonna be so powerful on defense and most people aren't gonna use her on defense, but not much of her kit goes towards her being like really powerful there. Her rush is a lot slower, so she obviously needs AP weapons and there's nothing really that amazing on her passives that are going to help her defensively except the days resistance to a certain extent spirit is just going to be on every medic so that's just a little bonus on top now she is a specialist and she has got the specialist skill retribution too this is kind of cool the way it plays into her kit again when this character is taken out all of the character's surviving teammates will immediately receive 50 percent of their max ap so that is actually kind of interesting in my opinion because like I said, if people see her as a priority target with her signature move and take her out, she's going to boost the AP of all her teammates. If people ignore her and take out her teammates, that's where her signature move comes in. So I like the way it can go here, personally. I think that's a really cool balance, the way they've done this. Okay, so it is the first turn and I have heavy focused Erika here, as you can see. We are going to take her out and you can see all of her teammates just got 50% AP. Holly and Pete had not been targeted at all, and they obviously 
got a lot of AP. They don't have the weapons to get the rushes quickly. This is just to show you how it works. We did get a little bit of damage off of Maggie, and that got her a rush very quickly. There is high potential for this to be extremely useful for defense teams. I don't see it being as useful for attack teams because she'd most likely be the most defensive character on an attack team. I just kind of see this as more of a counter for the characters like Andrea and Princess who will potentially focus her very early on in the fight where she's going to be useful no matter what. Erica, if she's taken out early, the specialist skill makes her useful. If she isn't taken out early, she's going to get her rush off and heal characters up. If other characters are taken out, she's going to revive them. Really nice combo of how her kit works, in my opinion. Now, she has got an attached weapon, of course. We see it in her hands, going absolutely crazy. Erica's staggering P90. This is what it looks like when it's like, is this silver? I think it's a silver rating. So once it gets up to the, the platinum legendary and beyond, it will start looking like that weapon on the left-hand side, no doubt. The extra, you know, long spikes on the front, the, uh, the optics on the top, that sort of thing. If we look at the stats it brings to the table, it is 25% HP, a medium bonus to AP when taking damage, stun when attacking, a better chance to stun the enemy for two turns. So this weapon is kind of strange. It's pointing you in two separate directions in my opinion. The first two, the HP and the, the AP on defense, is you know pointing you more towards a defense team. Most characters that have this, it's like, yeah, they're trying to tell you, hey, this character is good for defense. But the special is much more offensive, you know, this is one for an attack team. On a defense team, you definitely want focus stun on her or stun on de defense, you know. You want a weapon that's going to stop her from being, you know, so easily hard focused early on. Or at least, you know, force people to use a disarm. In this case, it wouldn't. But you could potentially see that as a bonus. You could say, hey, I don't mind if she gets focused. She's got that retribution too. So if she does get focused and taken out, my other teammates are gonna rush because of it. If she gets left alone because of the retribution too, that stun on attack is gonna be useful. And obviously the other stuff's gonna happen, you know, the revives. The, obviously the downside is if she does the revive, this won't happen. She hasn't got an offensive signature move. So there's not gonna be any potential for stun on attack to actually take place. So where I go with this weapon is I would make it 35% attack and a huge bonus to AP when attacking. Upgrade it to five star. It is five star already, but I had to do that to put a weapon in her hands, but upgrade it to five star, make it 1535 and then 45% attack. This way, if you ever did want to use her on an attack team, you know, as a battle medic, she still has a fairly hard hitting rush. She's nice to recover from situations. I can see a lot of people trying to use this character on attack. You just get a lot out of her. She's got control potential with this weapon as well. I actually like her more now because of the, the attack potential, just because of this weapon. And then if you did want to use her as a defensive character, you could just put a focus stun weapon in her hands or the battle pass weapon that we got before, the absolute defense weapon, both would be absolutely fine. So this is Mythic Erica, the grizzled veteran. And I think she is actually obviously a good character. It's hard to balance a medic to be good offensively, but I think they've done that. But it has been at the sacrifice of her defensive capabilities. She's going to massively rely on a weapon to be good defensively. And when I say a weapon, I mean like, like I said before, focus stun. I would probably double down on the stats, honestly, because she's just going to be an easy focus otherwise and just hope that someone either hits her with one of those rampage, you know, extra hits or you have to have an AP manipulator on defense like Glenn. So there are ways around it, but she's going to need the stats because she doesn't get much from her passives, you know, to boost her defensively at all, unfortunately. But on attack, I think she's going to be really good for people who are, you know, punching up. If you've got a, like a weaker attack team coming up against much stronger defense teams, because she's obviously going to be able to pick up your damage dealers, you know, to, for round two effectively in the fight. It will mean you're going into extended fights on attack, but it's better than losing. But do tell me your thoughts on Mythic Erica. What do you think about her as a character? Is she going to be the one you focus from the War Depot? There are three characters in there. I have reviewed two of them now. Glenn and now Erica. And I will be checking out that third character sometime in the next few days. Probably early next week but do give me your thoughts in the comments down below that is going to be the end of my video guys if you did enjoy it or find it informative please hit the like button if you are new to my channel please hit subscribe thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving